Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is Thursday, January the 5th, 2023. We've changed the last number again. I wish we could stop that, but time marches on. Doesn't slow down for nobody. It's another technical podcast. Glad you could join us today, whether you're here live, catching this on YouTube or the RSS feed, SoundCloud, Patreon's page, Spotify, iTunes, Podcast Addict, whatever the hell you're listening to. Bless you. Welcome back. Hope you had a, uh, a wonderful holiday, assuming uh, many of you are now back from said holiday and, uh, and back, to, uh, back to work. In full swing, uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully it was a uh, a nice holiday, one way or the other. Whether it was just time off, binging shit, time with family, time to yourself, a little bit of column A, B, and C. It's good time for that, and uh, and yeah, onwards to another year. This is technically, I guess, remind myself. This is, I want to say, this is season. We we always we change the seasons based on the year, and so I think this is either season I think this is either technically season five or six now. I have to remind myself when I go to fill out the RSS feed uh, of what season we're technically on now, uh, because yeah, I've changed it based on the year. No actual episode count to determine the season, just the year, the calendar year. Uh, but uh, but yeah, if the uh, if you're watching this on Twitch today and it goes down, uh, it would be surprising. Yeah, Twitch the whole has been site is, the in the whole toilet. Site is messed up right now. Yeah. By the way, yeah. <laughs> I'm recording this locally, so we'll be okay. Right. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's uh, whether so whether I can you know, it doesn't matter. I, I upload it via a local file uh, for YouTube, so we'll be uh, we'll be okay. If uh, if it's down, it's down. Twitch has been bro- uh, borked for the last couple of days. I know you you messaged or put out a tweet. Uh, that, uh, you threw in the towel about halfway through the day, a little over halfway through the day for, uh, your stream the other day, uh, when, uh, things were bad, and then later that night, because I don't start, I don't start these days until after I'm back from the house or, or, or whatever, uh, Twitch was technically up, but the servers were just, pfft, like, the only saving grace was we were playing Scrabble. And so, technically, the video feed only needed to be updated once every five minutes, and nobody was going to lose anything. Everyone was going to be perfectly fine. All the audio makes it through, because that's only, you know, the audio is like 96 KB. There's like, the, the servers would properly have to be dead for the audio not to go through. So, everyone still stuck around and watched the stream despite that fact, because, yeah, it was Scrabble. You don't need to fucking see, it doesn't need 60 FPS video for Scrabble to make it, to make it through. But, uh, yeah, so I guess today they're still struggling, <clears throat> struggling with that. They never mentioned what it was. They mentioned that they thought they had fixed it, but uh, evidently not. So we'll we'll trudge on, and uh, uh, and uh, people can either catch just the audio as it comes through, or nothing, and watch this on on YouTube and the RSS feeds later. But before we get started, Mister Black, most important question of the week: How was your week? Uh, it was fine. Nothing, nothing crazy. I'm trying to think. Yeah, nothing. Uh, it's it's just been another week, man. Just been the the week. Christmas decorations are officially down. Yep, they've been put down. away. Yeah, I took that stuff down here. The stuff was down for a few days upstairs. I was just lazy and just didn't get around <laughs> to doing it. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, today's my sister's birthday. Oh, um, so yeah. Outside of that, nothing else. <laughs> Is she coming over or anything or or, or whatnot? No. Or- no, I don't think so. No, no. Um, no. They'll they'll be they'll be over here. I don't know if they're coming this weekend. I think they might be coming over this weekend. I'm not sure. So it'll be same it'll old be shit, man. Same old, same, same old shit. Incredible. Same old, same. Incredible. Yeah, we uh, we took down our our Christmas stuff as well. We uh, uh, it reminded me though there was one year you talk about being lazy about taking your your shit down. I, I remember one year back in like I don't know twenty. 16 2017 uh, lazy was a different bro my tree was a fire hazard in the house it was there for so long if you touch if you uh, you went over and you just you 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 breathed in the wrong direction half the needles coming off that tree uh the whole house was left decorated until like the end of january and uh when i took that tree when i took that tree 
It was like rigor mortis. It was complete. There was no, it wasn't pliable anymore. It was completely bone dry. It, like, a, and so like you, it actually hurt to take things off of it because it wasn't soft needles anymore. It was like, it was basically like putting your hands into a bunch of fucking razors. Uh, and then we, we, we got the, well, by the time we took the lights off, I swear to God, it looked like the fucking Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Shit was just fucking naked. And whatever was left was removed when I dragged it through the patio door out onto the back deck. And you know, it wouldn't fold anymore because it was bone dry. So all it was was just needles fucking everywhere. It took me like three days of a vacuum cleaner to try to fucking clean the entire house full of needles. Uh, but yeah, that that's definitely happened before. I've gotten lazy with my uh, with my uh, my my decoration take them. Yeah, we took those down. Uh, we got uh, we got lots more done at the house. We're getting the the permits are on the way through. We're now at the weird junction where the water commission hasn't done hasn't passed their portion of it, so we have to wait, like the, the planning and development one is passed through for now until inspection, but the water development, uh, water commission still hasn't looked at theirs, which is stupid because theirs is the least amount of work, they literally look at it and see that there's nothing being done, and then they just say, oh yes, thank you for your money, and then check the box and it's fucking finished. Uh, so hopefully that speeds the fuck up uh, and gets along, but uh, that's done. We had the, uh, the guy come back to do our backsplash, and, um, and, uh, fixed a couple of spots in the floor, uh, that got finished, and just like, it's, it's like clockwork now, Mr. Black, you always, even if it doesn't set you back in time, you expect something at this house to go wrong, and so, uh, the grout that we had selected for this backsplash is called Starry Night, which mm. evokes pretty dark imagery, you know, it's a, mm. it's a, it's not a light color, starry night, it's a dark, 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 dark blue, and the reasoning for that was the edge of the tiles that we had, had, uh, the border wasn't black, but it was a dark, dark, dark blue, and then just to the outside of that, it has a very fucking almost imperceptible border of, like, a fleck of gold, gold bronze kind of a deal around the edge of the tile, and we wanted to try and highlight that, so we chose the dark blue, to blend with the outside of it, but to like show off that little that little border a bit more. So we pick that up. He puts that bitch on the wall. When he mixed that bucket, that shit was darkness. It was black, black. That shit was that shit was like you looked inside of it. You lost your soul for a moment. That's how black that shit was. He put it on the wall, still black. He left this morning. We went over there. That shit is light skinned. It's Wonder Bread. That shit looks like it has a 401k at eight years old and paid his taxes oh already. Okay, it. so it's not white, but it's it's very light. It's a light gray. It is not nothing about it evokes the name Starry Night. It's more like it's more like slightly muddy milk. It's not really. It's not really. So, so, uh, yeah, uh, that was, and, and you know, the thing about backsplash tile is that it's not like floor tile, you don't just dig that grout out, that's in there. Once that shit's in there, you're, you're either taking all of the tile off the wall, which is going to also normally necessitate to replace all of the gyp rock behind it, yep. <laughs> or you tile over top of it and reduce the size of your kitchen by about half an inch by the time you're all said and done. So, so we looked at it and I was like, oh my fucking God, you've got to be kidding me. Like, I just can't, I just can't eke out a dub in this house. It's just nothing but L's. Now, thankfully, so yesterday it was, it was still like really streaky and, and whatnot. And there were parts that were very dark still. And I was like, I, I was even more pissed off because like now it just looks dirty. Now the grout just looks dirty. It's not uniform in color. So now it looks like, you know, we haven't washed the backsplash in nine months. It's black mold all up in this bitch. And so it looks really terrible. So I was like, in my mind, I was like, okay, if tomorrow when this is fully dry and all of the moisture is out of the grout, if it's uniform, I'll just fucking live with it. Because then it's it's at least uniform. It's not that it looks bad. It's just not what we chose. So you, you get disappointed when you, pan, you spend all this money and everything is done and the tile looks fucking incredible and then you put the grout on and it's like 18 shades lighter than it was supposed to be. It's a little bit disappointing. So anyway, it does, it, it has, it is now uniform so I will be okay. More importantly, M is still okay with it. So as long as that's, the and boss right. is happy. Everything is go. okay. But yeah, I, I texted, I texted Tyler. I was like, Mitch, I was like, bro. I know, 
I know it ain't you, because it's kind of hard to fuck this up. Like, he, there was only ever one bag mixed, so it wasn't like he mixed half a bag and then diluted it with too much water. It was exactly one bag was mixed to do all of the fucking walls. It's like, I, I, but what is, I like, took a picture, I was like, does this look normal to you? And he was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck me, I would win the lottery on this bag of fucking grope. So anyway, it is what it is, uh, but, uh, but it, it still looks, it still looks phenomenal. It's just not, when your mind is set on what it's gonna look like, it's always disappointing. But beyond that, everything else is going great at the house, uh, and so we're, we're, we're happy with that. We got almost all the flooring, there's only a patch of the master left that hasn't been done. And that's just not done because we're still using it as a construction sawing zone and shit. And we didn't want to floor it until the very end. So uh, we're putting baseboards on right now and painting up some trim and, and whatnot. So we're, we're actually legitimately uh, in the, the throes of the end, barring the permit coming through and be like, <laughs> you got to get a second mechanical ventilator, bitch. And at which point uh, that might be the start of my villain origin story at that point, if that's the case. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, Things are going well. So let's talk about some video game news, Mr. Black. We got updates. The FTC. Right. We talked about this the other uh, the other week, about how they were entered, they threw their hat into the ring with Microsoft buying out Activision Blizzard, and they were like, shit, there's free money to be had here, we should probably get in here. So they did. Uh, and uh, everyone's assumption that was in the know said, hey, this is almost guaranteed to not go to court. This is just the FTC being political and making a few extra dollars for free. And so we're finally getting some actual public information about the FTC's filing at this point. And indeed, it does seem like they're leaning hard into a settlement and not actually having any intentions to take this to federal court. They're just in it for some money because they can. And so they're going to fucking do it. Uh, we're going to hear more about it in the not too distant future. However, Microsoft came out and said uh, as well that um, uh, that they have uh, they, they or they expect the EU and the UK, you know, which is the CMA that we've talked about as well, that was in their phase two, whatever the fuck, for the last uh, little while, and goes into March. They expect uh, the EU and UK to be settled soon, and then as soon as that's settled, they're going to take that settlement right on over to the FTC, plop it in front of them, and say, all right, let's speed this the fuck up. You're the only one holding this bitch up, and the FTC will be sitting there, you know, twirling their mustache, saying, we've been waiting for you to arrive. Nah, let's cut a deal. I'll do it for... Two billion dollars, and Microsoft be like, sold! Give them the money and walk the fuck away. It's kind of what this is likely going to look like. But that's the latest on, uh, on that, the FTC. That's got to be the easiest job in the world, watching this thing from the background and going, shit, that's free money. Let's just say we're going to do something, then Microsoft's going to pay us billions of dollars. <clears throat> uh, we've got a possible Twitch takeover in the form of a game. That is, not corporately speaking. Everyone calm down. Don't get excited. Still stuck with Amazon. Uh, the sequel to the popular Payday 2, which of course was a sequel in itself, as the name implies. Uh, but Payday 3 launches on PC and consoles sometime this year. They, uh, they post a little extra on Twitter to remind everyone of that. Payday 2, uh, I'm sure lots of people that have spent any amount of time on Twitch would have likely seen. It was very popular for quite a long time uh, as a, a game for uh, a number of streamers to be playing. Chiefly, one, it was very popular, but two, you ran a crew. Like, you had like two, three, four people or whatever running a crew in Payday, and so it was a good collaborative effort type game for people to come together, similar to why uh, Battle Royales are popular, where you'll, you know, you'll see your big creators getting together and have like their super event streams where it's like, you know, fucking Doc and Tim the Tap Man or friggin' uh, Dr. Lupo and somebody else, you know, they all get together and they can do it because it's a collaborative, uh, a collaborative in environment. Same thing is likely to happen here. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm excited about it, but I'm interested because Payday 2 was, was a pretty fun game. I had a good time with it. I wouldn't mind running it back if it's, uh, if it's a good installment. Uh, and, uh, and I'll be interested to see if that style of game is still going to be popular by the time it comes out. Uh, if maybe people are, you know, looking to have some sort of diversion from nothing but battle royales all the fucking time. Because you gotta believe people do. It's just that no game has really... We thought Halo was gonna be it. But, but as we all know, 343 dropped the ball, then they poked a hole in the ball, deflated the ball, burned the ball, pissed on the ashes, and then cried about it and said it wasn't their fault. 
so now we need something else. Do I think Payday 3 is going to be the replacement for something like the Juggernaut of Halo? Probably not. But it would be a nice mix-up. It'd be similar in vain to like a Rainbow Six situation. It's a, like a tangentially related. Enough people could cross over and be like, yeah, this is a good time and, and go with it. Did you ever play Payday 2 when it was a thing back in the day? Never played it. No? Have you, have you, do you at least know I've what the game it. is? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I've seen it, but I've never played it. Yeah, yeah. I had a, a group of, of, of friends that were all like super into it and were, uh, really enjoyed it. And it is a fun game. It was, it was challenging. It was unique. It's not necessarily something that you see all the time. It's not, I suspect to a degree, it's kind of a, uh, as similar to like even in RP for you guys. You guys have like heists that you guys can do within the world of RP. Uh, and it uh, really, for all intents and purposes, it's an extension of a bank heist because, well, it's called payday for a reason. Uh, you're, you're stealing money from places and jewels and other things. So, uh, yeah, hopefully it will, uh, it will do well. We could use some, some freshening up in the space on twitch.tv and, uh, and other places. Uh, there's the amount of discourse going around, as usual, Warzone 2's been out long enough where it went from, oh, Warzone 2's great, to Warzone 2 is the worst fucking Call of Duty game ever made! And, <laughs> it's, it's taken, it's, you know, it's gotten to the point, remember Blackout? Which was like their first, their first BR attempt back in the day? So Blackout wasn't bad, but people played it and were like, this is, what the fuck is this? We've officially, since, since we've had Warzone and now Warzone 2, we are far enough separated from Blackout that now Blackout is being remembered as the greatest thing that they have ever done uh, in the space. We've, uh, we've hit that, that part of the roller coaster uh, in the discourse right now on socials and on Twitch. Uh, earlier this week, California put to law, this was a, kind of an interesting thing, uh, from a, just a general, not just gaming perspective, but of course it pertains a bit to gaming, uh, given where it's located. Earlier this week, California put to law that companies must post salaries in their job listings. So previous to this, and this is pretty much, I mean, here, if you were to go look for jobs, you'll find, you can find sometimes the listing will include a salary. Sometimes it will be a salary band. Sometimes that's from the company itself. Sometimes it's actually just from like, if you're using a, um, like a job finding website, it's the, it's the website that is combing the industry for the average and putting an average in. Uh, sometimes it's hard to tell which of those you're getting when you see it on the site. Sometimes you have to go digging to find out, is, the, is this the actual salary or is this like something that is just an average based on, on whatever, you know, uh, this website is showing me. So they put the law that companies have to post their salaries in their job listings now. In the video game industry specifically, to bring this back to what we would talk about here on Tech Alpha, this has led to some developers like Blizzard trying to work around this requirement by posting enormous ranges uh, in their job listings. So for example, one role is listed uh, recently after this change, uh, to range from $134,000 to $247,000, which is a slight range. There's several dollars between those two figures, uh, and it's not the only one. There was another one that ranged from eighty k to $150,000. Uh, so basically they're saying, hey, shit, you could be either doing, you know, okay for yourself, or you could be fucking bringing in a cool quarter of a million dollars a year. Who knows until you get here, but that's what we're going to be able to post. So, uh, and there's a very good reason for why they're doing this. It's, it's why that most companies do this in general is, is there is an agency problem there where the company has all the information. You have none. Uh, it is taboo still to talk about salaries in any industry in general. People still don't, you know, the whole idea is don't ask, you know, don't ask a woman or age, don't ask a man a salary. Uh, and so there's a lot of like fog of war as to what everyone is actually making and what any given role in any given industry, what is it actually worth? What are companies, especially on the higher end, actually paying these people for these roles? And what it allows them to do is when they hire somebody, they, well, anyone that's gone through a process, especially with a tech company, is they're going to ask you, so what do you think? What do you, th what do you think? It's like doing, it's like Jeff going to a, a garage sale. So what do you think, you know, what do you think this is, uh, what do you think this is worth? And then there's a dickering back and forth. From between the entities until you come to a and you come to a thing where you're like, oh, okay, so this the, we are comfortable in providing you with this compensation, you know, whether it's the salary alone or the salary plus plus benefits or the salary plus benefits and stock options or whatever else comes to this, you know, that you come to this number. 
But that number's not public, and nobody really knows what everyone's getting. So now that they're doing this, this is how Blizzard and other- it's not that Blizzard's the only one fucking doing this, but that's just for the sake of the video game connection. Where people are now finding out in the games industry in general, some of them are finding out that they're getting fucking fleeced. <laughs> so, there's some people who have been doing high-end QA for uh, some of the most prominent companies in the industry for bordering on a decade plus who have enormous amounts of responsibility within within that role uh, that are getting paid in some instances one half to one third what other people in comparative company sizes are making at that role and they but in the past nobody had a fucking clue like nobody like unless the only way for you to really know this would be if you had a friend like let's say you worked at blizzard and you had a friend that was also doing QA, but they were doing QA at, like, let's say, Riot. And you were like, hey, friendo at Riot, how are you doing? And your friendo at Riot says, I just bought my third car. And you said, excuse me? And then you might know that you're getting paid one-third as much as your friend that's working at Riot for doing the same job. And, uh, and so, and this isn't just, like, a gender or, like, a sex difference between men and women. This is everyone getting fucked hard. And that's, and that's for the reason I just explained, of course, it's not, it's not exactly secrets. The companies get all the power by doing that. It allows them to spend less money on employees as they don't know what they're worth and they can get away with that. And some people even know what they're worth, but they can really play hardball in the interview, and people are just looking for a job, they're eventually going to likely cave. They might think, oh, I'm worth 150 k but the company offers them 125 and they're like, am I really going to argue so yeah. fucking hard for 25000 extra dollars, and they just take it? So so there you go. And this, this uh, it's California. If it gets any further than that, I have no idea. But uh, what do you think of this of, of that change? I personally am in favor of it because I think it levels the playing field for people entering the market, so you don't end up in crazy situations where one guy is getting paid or girls getting paid fifty k, and literally across the street, same role, same responsibilities, hundred and fifty k. And it's not just because they can't pay it, it's because they haven't had to post anything, so there's been no pushback from people who are, who are taking these positions. Because it's hard, it's like, I know it's like about knowing your worth, but there is a line to how much you can go in, and they come in, the company says, we're going to give you this, and, and, and you think you're worth uh, like $80,000 more than that. In the back of your mind, you're thinking, if I even say that number... There is no shot. <laughs> There's no shot yeah, that they're I mean, gonna fucking it. take yeah. it. I mean, I get it, but at the same time, like, I'm not against this, mm. but like, at the same time, if you're a professional, and I mean, we're talking pretty damn good money here on on both. Well, spectrums, keep in mind so this is like, California, so the the inflate it's it's pretty inflated because of cost of living. So you, but the, like, don't like this isn't like like 247k in California would if you went you know, more east might be 120k or 130k. Like, it literally balloons because of cost of living. But nevertheless, these are good good salaries, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it's, it's partly the responsibility of the person that's getting the job to go and know sort of what these positions are paying in general. Like... If I were to go to school and say, take, um, I don't know, plumbing, like take a trade, I, mm. I took plumbing or I went and took, um, I don't know, software development, or I went and took, uh, fuck, uh, call. I went to culinary school, come a chef. It is up to the person that is picking this career to know roughly what these jobs pay um so you know transparency is never really a bad thing um it definitely it definitely makes things a little bit like do people really want to know what your salary is do people you know do some people care greatly that they don't want people to know what they make. Um, others don't give a shit. Um, but I think that that is, it should be up to the person. Um, not necessarily to the public. Uh, but with that being said, 
if you don't agree with that policy, then you, you know you don't you don't work there. Um, you you know you always, you always have a choice. So you know the whole like, well, I think I'm worth eighty thousand dollars more, and they're offering this, like what you said, and I'm scared to to say, well, like, dude, there's an eighty thousand dollar discrepancy here. Like, <laughs> if I if I tell them eighty thousand dollars more, they might laugh in my face and like be like, dude. There's not a fucking chance. If that's the case, then like you have no business like going there anyway. Like you probably shouldn't work there. Like if you really feel like you're worth that much and like you have a very specific expertise, it's either two things. Either one, you you really are worth that much and it's up to you to, it doesn't mean just because it's $80,000 less that you don't attempt to do that. There are several ways you could go about it. Number one, you could just blatantly say like, hey, I think I'm actually worth this much and here is why. Right? So th this is this is why I'm I'm worth what I'm worth. And that might mean you have to bring in and show some of your work. You might have to say, well, hey, you know, this company over here and this company over here, they pay this much. Now I understand that I might be a little bit more or hey, I'm even a little bit less, but I really want to work at this company. Um, you know, or if it's an $80,000 discrepancy and you really want to work at this company, but you want to make more money, but you're scared to flat out say it because you might, they, they might just say, no, no, we're going to get somebody else. Trying to find the line between scaring off the job versus yeah. getting what you're worth kind of thing. But yeah. what you can do is you can say, listen, I was expecting to be paid this much. I think I'm worth this much. Here's why. Now, I'm not saying that you have to pay me this much, but I want to know what I have to do to get to this salary and what that looks like. And if it's even possible here, if they say, no, we don't pay anybody that much, you're making more than the CEO or you're making more than the second in command or whatever, then you already have that answer. Then you can just go ahead and make the decision. Like if you want to be there or not, but at least from, from a boss's point of view, I think they're going to respect the fact that you're asking how you can achieve to get to there opposed to basically strong arming. It might look like you're strong arming them to say, like, if I don't get paid this much, then then I'm not I'm not working here. So, like, there's ways to go about of doing it. Um, I'm not totally against this idea. I don't I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Like, it wouldn't matter much to me. But once again, I just think people should. If you're going to get into a career, you should roughly know how much you're making like. If I if, if if I go and apply at McDonald's, like I know what fast food restaurants are paying. They're paying minimum wage. And if they're really desperate, they might pay an extra dollar more, right? So like I'm not going to go there and expect them to pay me $35 an hour. It's just not going to happen. And they're not going to go on their bulletin board and say you're going to make between $17 an hour and $42 an hour. It just doesn't exist. So in jobs like this, I would need to know like, hey, what's the workload? How many, you know, what's what's expected of me? And then figure out if if you think that it's worth it or not. You know, at the end of the day, man, like people got to put in their own due diligence as well. Like not everything is just fucking on a on a dish that people can just go. No, but to. I think this allows them to have due diligence to actually know, like, even if it was like, let's say it was like this, where it's Blizzard saying it's a hundred thousand or banned, right? At least then with that knowledge, they can go in and do what you just mentioned, where it's like, hey, you're offering me on this salary band that you posted, you're offering me a hundred instead of 134, let's say they offered 150. So we're 16 K mm -hmm. above, but you think you're worth 175 out of that salary band. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you're not worth the 247, but you think you're worth, you know, a little bit more. And then you can, then you, then absolutely. And it should be, even if this wasn't the case, you're right. This is what you would do anyway in an interview is you would want to ask, what is it? In the, if it's possible within this company, what is it that I would need to like? What what targets do I need to hit to achieve yeah. this this salary? Uh, this this salary, and at least this gets you that far. Prior to this, the only way for you to know is you'd have to like either know people who are in the industry who are doing the same job as you with similar experience to be able to see like you know and trying to find out what they're making between different companies. I mean, uh, there is Google. Google is a very amazing thing. And I yes. bet you I could go on Google right now and look up any job in any country or any state or province and have a median uh, rough 
like on what people make. So it's oh, like, oh sure, you get you get you get not a complete you get, guess. You know, it's, it's no, like, it's not dude. it's not a complete guess. But I would prefer I would prefer if a company is going to come out and say, look, this is the range that this role can achieve in this company is when you first get here this is what you can expect down here on this end and yeah. if you've been here for a while you expect up here yeah. and then when you negotiate your contract you say okay well you're placing me here this is why i think to be higher or whatever else and then it's and then it's it's easy there should always be a and there always will be a discussion between the employee and the employer as to how to best place them within the company. This just makes it so that there is less fog in between or less of an agency issue where the company knows, like, uh, they pay their QA guys $50,000 less than the guys across the street, and unless you know somebody, you'll never know that, and so the game is already stacked against you unless you can suss that information out through, like, Glassdoor or some shit on Google where you're going to go and, and hunt some, some salaries down in comparable companies. So, yeah, I think this is... I agree with you. Everyone should always have to do something and, or, or know that they are going to have to do some proving their point Bring, it's not just, you know, it's what can you do? Your resume is there. You had the interview. Now you have to impress them at the interview. Now you have to be able to say, this is really what I'm capable of. Show them some shit. This is why I think I'm worth X dollars uh, and come to an agreement and either come to an agreement or not. This just kind of helps it a little bit, especially in an industry where clearly there's some, clearly there's some serious, some serious ranges. If, if they're, if they're posting a $110,000 difference in one single role, that is a pretty, this is a pretty hefty friggin' range to work with, so I think this at least helps get a little bit closer to uh, to making those interviews uh, a little less one-sided. Um, despite general gaming market response, and this is a pivot away from that last topic, despite, I just had no segue for this, despite uh, the general gaming market largely stepping back from crypto and NFT anything, 2022 was like the year where everyone in the industry, the gaming industry, almost decided at once that they were going to try and do NFTs uh, and cram them into their games. Some of them got very hard-nosed about it, like, we're going all in, baby, we're fucking dumping all this money and time into NFTs and, and blockchain video games and, and whatnot. Well, one of those was Square Enix. And we talked about their, their getting into, uh, into it a few times over the last year. Uh, but the general market has stepped away from it because the response was so negative by so many people that they went, all right, maybe this ain't the gamble to be taken right now. Let's just step the fuck back and not, and not focus so hard on it. Square Enix says, no, I'm doubling down, tripling down. We're going all in. NFTs to the fucking moon, says the president of Square Enix. Uh, they put out their letter from uh, from the president, which is their New Year letter of the president from the president they get every year, uh, presumably in the new year, uh, where uh, Mr. Matsuda confirmed that the company is committing to NFTs and blockchain games. Uh, and that's just weird to me because this is a company, as we've talked about uh, even as recently as just a couple of weeks ago, this is a company that is financially kind of riding a weird line right now. To the point where they're selling off intellectual properties, like uh, selling off the Tomb Raider franchise uh, the, that has been relatively popular and well-received in the last several years, amongst others. They're divesting themselves largely of several IPs and just reducing them to like these core few to try and cut costs. We, we assumed here, maybe that meant they were trying to sell themselves to somebody. You know, trim the fat. You know, get it, get it down and, and concise and then get sell. Lean. Get it lean. Get it ready for market. Uh, and, uh, you would think that taking something that is as risky as blockchain and NFT, uh, gaming on while divesting yourself of proven intellectual property might be a weird choice when you're, when you're in this kind of financial situation, but evidently not there. Uh, the president seems to think that this is going to be all, uh, worth it in the end. Uh, and, and, I, and I, I have here in my notes somewhere, Yoshi P, who is the guy who's heading up Final Fantasy XIV and largely Final Fantasy XVI, uh, but somewhere he and the team at Final Fantasy XIV are crying in the fetal position as they continue to carry the fuck out of Square Enix. Uh, they're pretty much the only reason that company is, is even remotely financially stable at this point. Final Fantasy XIV has been carrying that shit for a while. Uh, and so, uh, uh, I don't suspect their job is going to get any easier if the president is hellbent on NFTs and blockchain and God help them 
if the president goes to Yoshi P and says, hey, you know what Final Fantasy XIV needs? NFTs. <laughs> Mr. Black, how much longer do you think that Square Enix is going to commit themselves to this? Do you think that they're, that, 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 like, they're now scared that it's going to look bad if they step out? Do you think it's like an ego check now where they're just all in because if they step back, they'll, you know, they don't want to be, they don't, don't want to be the ones proven wrong? I couldn't fucking tell you. It, none of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. <laughs> you know. <laughs> if you were trying to sell your company and you were selling off all this shit, would you be so hard in on NFTs and the blockchain no, right now? No, I wouldn't be. But <laughs> maybe they know something we don't know. Who knows? It's true. Illuminati. They might They might be geniuses. Who knows? It's possible. We'll find out. <laughs> we're going to find out for sure. Uh, oh, where am I now here? Let's see. We've barely entered uh, the new year, and we've already got some wild game rumors, Mr. Black. One of them, chiefly the craziest uh, that I've heard thus far, crazy in terms of like the Square Enix thing, doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever, is that Horizon Zero Dawn is rumored to already be getting a remake. Why? Just came out, like... this. Six, it'll be six years old in yeah, February. It's like, it's like dude. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> uh. It's a rumor. It might not be true, but at the same time, this is coming from, you know, Sony, who has been, you know, The Last of Us got like four fucking remakes now. Uh, like, uh, this, the, you know, we're, we're, we're remaking things that don't need remakes. Uh, Sony seems to be very, very happy with how they're performing. And so maybe they're thinking, hey, Horizon Zero Dawn remake PS5. Totally worth it. It is, the rumor also states that it wouldn't be Guerrilla Games making it. It would be somebody else uh, that, would be, uh, that would be handling this project. Which, if that was true, would also not instill significant confidence uh, either. However, yeah, whopping six years old. Uh, I know the answer to this, but Mr. Black, do any games that are only six years old need a remake? Oh. No. I, no, I didn't think so. No, <laughs> especially if they're Sony's already playable six. on the PS5. And it, have you seen Dude. how good Horizon still looks? It's six years old. It's six years old, man. It's not that old. <laughs> like this ain't twenty years old. No, it's not even ten years old. It's six. <laughs> this thing's about to enter school with primary. Seriously, barely old enough to learn the alphabet. Anyway, <laughs> we'll find out. Maybe it stays a rumor. However, it wouldn't shock me, given what we've seen them do with with uh, The Last of Us. It wouldn't shock me if we got if we got one. Uh, Atlas is appa uh, apparently prepping to announce several new games this year as well, which is substantial given their usual development schedule, which is more or less one to two games at best at any given time. Among those is rumored to be another rumor, and this one also makes a lot of sense, more sense, in fact, than, than Horizon Zero Dawn. It's rumored that the last of the modern Persona games that haven't gotten this treatment yet in Persona 3 is uh, getting around to being rebuilt to bring it up to Persona 5 status. So the kind of mechanics, graphical, the whole nine yards. And that is a game that is old enough to necessitate a remake. That, that is totally a thing. Uh, it's also in an awkward spot in that the original and the FES editions of that game, which were on the PlayStation, um, were split mechanically from the PSP or the Vita, whatever, I can't remember which one it was for, uh, edition, uh, the handheld edition. You can't control your teammates in battle directly in Persona 3 until much later in the game. Uh, and everyone hates that loathe it lots of people get into persona 3 and enjoy it they go back to play it after you know persona 4 persona 5 like oh I, I want i need to play more persona games they go back to 3 they find that out and they're like fuck this shit and they bail uh the handheld version you do get complete control however the dungeons literally look like the fucking uh microsoft uh you know screensaver that was like the maze remember that bitch do. It's basically what the ma that's it's basically what the dungeons look like uh, on the handheld version. It's not the fully rendered version. You're you're playing the the screensaver from Windows 95, uh, and so the like the the these two. If you merge those together, everyone would be like, "Yay!" So this is essentially 
what people would assume would happen. You bring it up to P uh, Persona 5 level, you allow people to control their characters, the dungeons are fully rendered, everyone's happy, it'll be great, it will sell lots of copies, it'll be uh, amazing. So, uh, that is the assumption of one of these several game announcements that are coming this year. We'll wait and find out more, but just the fact that they're announcing several is an interesting thing to me, because normally, like I said, Atlas only does a couple. I think this is indicative of how well they're doing after the sales of Persona 5 and releasing Persona 4 on the PC and other platforms and whatnot. I think they're making enough money now that they're like, holy shit, we can actually tackle, you know, some more projects all at the same, uh, the same time. Uh, and yes, Mark is right. It was also the best screensaver. Let's be honest. The bring back the... I mean, it's not like you can't get it right now, I'm sure, but, uh, but the, the maze... Some people might say it was the logo waiting for it to bounce in the corner. Fuck that shit. It was the maze. And if you were that crazy bastard that had like the weird pipe thing, fuck is wrong with you. Let's be real. Uh, it's been a while now, Mr. Black, but we got an update on the Silent Hill, the short message. We talked briefly about this, ironically, a short message on the short message a few podcasts back. Uh, it was originally raided in South Korea, which is where us included. Many people found out this game even existed in the first place. There's like zero announcement whatsoever, really, but to say that they were working on a couple of projects, people assume Silent Hill to some degree. Here we are, the short message gets uh, raided in South Korea. Everyone goes, oh shit, it's an actual game. But that's all we knew. Now it's gotten raided in, uh, what, what is it, Taiwan? I think I have here written in the, in the notes. Yes, Taiwan. And this rating seems to confirm that it's at least a timed exclusive for the PS5. Uh, because it's only rated for the PS5. <laughs> so, uh, with that being said, some people are now assuming that perhaps, given the announcement of the PSVR 2, that this short message will be a short-ish game uh, that's VR for the PS5. Uh, and use the PSVR 2, which seems totally reasonable. Plausible, to yeah. That's a very plausible, uh, a plausible thing to happen there. Uh, however, it could also just be that it's a timed exclusive for the PS5, and that's why we're only getting a rating for the PS5 at this time. But given the ties with Konami, the PSVR 2 release... Uh, the relatively quiet nature of this game in the first place, except for the ratings popping up in places, I do think that it's very likely to be a PSVR 2 thing, which would incre in increase its chances of being a flat-out PS5 exclusive, but, uh, but we'll wait and see. And that is one of, I believe, two semi-known projects in the Silent Hill universe, uh, at least, and so we'll wait and see. Maybe they'll actually talk about it soon. Like, at some point, they got to be looking at this going, look, people already know this game exists. We should probably say something about it. Eventually. Or maybe we're just waiting for a, a chance to release a trailer or something. I don't know. Um, Sony has announced, speaking of Sony, it's announced its upcoming accessibility controller called Project Leonardo. I saw this pop up on my timeline yesterday. Uh, similar to the Xbox's accessibility controller, the idea is, of course, to have a modular controller capable of allowing a wide range of less able gamers to enjoy as many games as possible. So, we talked about that Xbox One. I mean, it's been, it's been years since Xbox had that one out, and that has been very successful for, for Microsoft. Not in the terms of that they clearly haven't made 40 bajillion dollars off of it, uh, but I have seen countless, uh, uh, less able, uh, or disabled, uh, gamers posting them using the Xbox uh, controller to great effect and actually enjoying games that they would have never been able to enjoy otherwise. People were waiting, like, when is Sony... Uh, I mean, clearly they were going to be working on it. I don't think I don't think Sony was sitting in the background going, Yeah, fuck that market! Like, I'm pretty sure they were tr working on this for quite some time. It's not an easy thing to, to make one of these controllers. So, uh, but lo and behold, here we are. They have one uh, coming out, Project Leonardo. Uh, it looks... It's very... You know, the Xbox One, if you looked at it, you might not even tell that it's from Xbox, but the PlayStation one, you can fucking tell that shit is built for PlayStation. The the design, the color scheme, they they went all in on uh, on that shit. So uh, yeah, hopefully it's just as successful. It's great to see. We're seeing even in the Twitch space, we're seeing lots of uh, of gamers that are in that uh, in that uh, in that situation where they can't necessarily use normal input devices like a keyboard and mouse or a controller, being able to use devices like this and uh, and and be very successful and do shit that I can't do, like uh, you know, beat Dark Souls fucking blindfolded and shit. I, I I can't I can't do that shit on a good day. 
let alone let alone if you handed me uh handed me uh more barriers to entry so good on them good on sony uh and i'll look forward to to seeing just how uh, successful this is uh for them when it's uh, finally released i don't i don't know i to be honest i didn't look into it i don't i, I didn't see an official uh release for it but uh, i'm sure it won't be too far in the future and lastly for our gaming news it's mr black's favorite moments time to talk about tech but it's a brief oh one okay. it's a brief one i know settle down don't get too excited. Uh, NVIDIA continues to mangle its public image, Mr. Black. They are just out there thinking, I mean, NVIDIA and Square Enix should get together and teach each other how to, how to be even shittier at their fucking job. Uh, because NVIDIA has announced the 4070 Ti. Which, I, uh, uh, I mean, myself and pretty much everyone, anyone that has uh, more than three brain cells to rub together to create a thought, uh, all knew ahead of time was coming because remember they released when they released the 4080 we talked about it briefly i don't know if you remember this because you might have been half asleep when it was happening but 40 the 4080 there was two models there was like the there was like the 16 or whatever the 24 gig model i can't remember what it was uh vram and then they had a 12 gig model of the 4080 and they were priced slightly different but it was a very confusing market segmentation that everyone was like what in the fuck is this even supposed to why are you doing this this makes no sense and so they were like, fine, cancel it, pulled that 12 gig model off the shelf. To which everyone then said, wait until that motherfucker comes back as a 4070 or a 4070 Ti. And wouldn't you know it, it's exactly what this motherfucker is. It is just the shit can 4080 that they put away. They're bringing it back out, calling it the 4070 Ti. And I hate to be the bearer of mad news, but they're pretty much charging the exact same amount of money they did when it was the 4080. Uh, and, uh, just gave it a different name. So, uh, it's getting, it's getting completely fucking destroyed by, uh, reviewers right now for obvious reasons. It's MSRP is 800 US dollars, which means it will sell for more like a thousand by the time it actually hits a shelf somewhere. Uh, and, uh, generally speaking, the answer is don't. It's just that. It's that simple. In all honesty, keep an eye out for the 3000 series, which still crush video games mercilessly right now, because it's very powerful. Uh, they built too many of them. So there's a chance, a rare opportunity in the, in the uh, hardware market where they have so much inventory that they might actually have to put them on sale. And so just keep an eye out. You might get lucky here uh, with a 3000 series. And I'd buy a 3000 series over a 4000 series any day of the week, especially if you're going to save some money. Because I don't think it will be until a five or, or 6000 before NVIDIA has gotten their shit together. Uh, and even then, we'll have to wait and see. But nevertheless, yes, that 4070 Ti. Hot fucking mess. And that's all we got, which means, Mr. Black, it's time to sell out! Patreon.com slash lag TV. Head on over there and throw some money at the screen. If you can't, that's okay. You can support our sponsor, NordVPN. You can go to NordVPN.com slash OTT. Use the promo code OTT. Get yourself a massive discount, plus four bonus months when you use that promo code and get a two-year subscription. Uh, guys, stay safe. Stay anonymous when you're on the internet. Watch different regions of Netflix and other streaming services at the click of a button. It's that easy. Just one click and you are connected. Plus, they've got a new uh, app for the desktop called Threat Protection. You can have that running in the background. You don't even need to be connected to a VPN. So, so to a server, it'll run in the background. It'll make sure that you don't get those pesty pop-ups, those spam pop-ups. Uh, it will detect and remove malware on your computer, and it will just make surfing the internet and running your computer a safer, happier place. Guys, it's NordVPN. It's time. Use the promo code OTT. You got a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you don't like it for whatever reason, within 30 days... Get your money back. No questions asked. Guys, it's less than half a cup of coffee at Starbucks at this point. <laughs> That's where inflation has, has gone. And by the end of this year, we're going to say it's a quarter of a cup of coffee a month. All right? So just for a few dollars a month, you can get yourself NordVPN. <laughs> use up to six simultaneous devices. It works on your smartphone, your smart TV, your laptop, your PC, your Mac, your Android, your i, your your iPhone, guys, they got it virtually for everything. It even works in China. If you're sick and tired of seeing this content is region blocked, 
You bypass that at the click of a button with NordVPN. Go check them out. Link is in the description below. And uh, don't forget to use that promo code. Even if you guys are, uh, your subscription is almost up, renew, take advantage of that, use the promo code, and also check out their other products that they got going on over there at Nord. And that's it. Boom. Which means it's time to move on to... Movies and TV. Jeremy Renner was in a, was in critical condition uh, earlier this week, and by that I mean like in the last 48 hours, uh, more or less, uh, <clears throat> following his chest being crushed under a snowplow and was airlifted to hospital. Uh, I saw earlier today that he uh, posted a video. Uh, his mother and his sister were there with him at the time. Uh, and that was following a couple of surgeries, but yes, evidently he was clearing some snow for family to get off the property, uh, after they had gotten together for the holidays or whatnot, and, uh, through a series of truly unfortunate events, he ended up getting crushed by the, uh, the piece of equipment that he was using, uh, and, uh, and yeah, his actual chest and part of his torso was caved, and so they had to, uh, airlift him to hospital, and, uh, and obviously do some pretty major surgeries for that, uh, but he is, uh, awake and, uh, and at least partially in good spirits, and hopefully continues to, uh, to, uh, to, you know, to get back uh, on his, uh, feet as uh, quickly as possible, but that's fucked up. Yeah. Heavy equipment. Crazy. You gotta, especially in the winter months, you gotta be fucking careful that shit. That, that, that stuff will fuck your day up, uh, if you're, yeah, not, apparently... uh, if you're not careful. I'm pretty sure, like, apparently one of his legs was, was really messed up, too. And his, yeah. You know, his body. It was basically, like, half his correct. body, pretty much. Yeah. Like, yeah. chest down. Yeah, so. so uh, crazy. Yeah. Crazy stuff. Um, and in a similar, not identical, but similar, you know, I'm sure you saw it as well. I can't think of his name right now off the top of my head, but there was the young football player uh, this week that uh, took a hit on the field uh, and his heart stopped and he's still, uh, in, uh, critical condition. Uh, however, I think just today they also announced that, uh, the doctors have said that he's neurologically anyway, sound things are, are okay. Did you hear about this? I, I heard about, I've, I've heard it and saw it, but I didn't hear about any of the update. Yeah. So that was, that was all I saw. That's all they said was he's at least neurologically there. He was holding, uh, hands at the very least with people that were next to the bed uh, and so hopefully that continues to, uh, to progress in, in a positive direction. That looks like they, I don't think they've said anything, but the first thing that came to my mind was, um, it was similar to way back in the day, the first time I ever saw the, or heard of this happening, Jerry, the King Lawler, remember that wrestler? So Jerry, Jerry took a bad bump, uh, and, uh, and it stopped his heart. And there's the, I can't remember the term for it, but there is a, there is a amount of force and a timing of where your heart is in in its rhythm where those two things like perfect storm can come together and it will stop your heart um, from blunt force trauma. And so that's what happened to him. He was in a similar situation. He ended up th obviously uh, coming out of it and and being able to recover. But uh, but yeah, that looks like because when I saw the hit, that guy's helmet went right into his oh, chest. Yeah. And that was the first thing that came to my mind. I don't... Damar Hamlin was his name. Or is his name, I should say. And, uh, thank you, Run Deck. And so that was the first thing that came to mind. I don't know if any announcements have been made for that, but I suspect that was it. He didn't get hit in the head. You know, his head hit the ground a little funky when he hit the ground, obviously, but... But you don't... Your heart doesn't stop from head trauma, necessarily, so that that's... That seems to be my, maybe what it was, uh, um, at least from my completely uneducated opinion. Uh, but we'll, you know, I suspect we'll find out more as things progress. But hopefully he pulls, uh, he pulls through on the other side of that. He's young, young boy. Yeah, he's twenty three yeah. years old, uh, and uh, and you hate to you hate to see it. Um, but uh, yeah, not the first. It's not. It's it's. I guess you could call it rare. It's not like one in a billion, but it is rare. But when you're in a contact sport. Clearly, the odds go up because you're getting yeah. hit harder and more frequently, and so it's just one of those things you got to be you got to be careful of. Uh, Netflix, Mr. Black, has canned another new series after a single season. Stop if you've heard this before. But that this one is 1899. I saw one or two episodes and watched it. It was okay. Oh, I didn't think it didn't blow my fucking hair back if I had any, but it was okay. 
Uh, and, and But at the same time, I guess I'm not shocked that Netflix once again has swooped in and uh, given something exactly one season to come out and be God uh, and, uh, and just immediately take over the world. So, uh, yeah, they can that. And so my question to you, Mr. Black, as I have here in my notes, uh, you know, when, the way that I look at it, is that loads of the greatest television shows or movie or, or you know, multi-part movies in terms of series and stuff, but especially in this instance, because it's more about a show, many of the best have had mediocre to poor first seasons. And they, and then like the second, third season, they go on to be the greatest fucking shows like that people like will ever talk about. Not even Game of Thrones had a particularly fucking incredible first season. It was just okay. It got people talking mostly because... They subverted expectations with the death of one of the primary characters, like, right out of the gate, and then everyone went, what the fuck is supposed to happen? Uh, you know, even though it was Sean Bean and everyone should have fucking just known ahead of time that Sean Bean was gonna die, but nevertheless, you know, that was what got it, because otherwise, it was just okay. The writing was just okay. The acting was just okay. Everything was just kind of okay, and then it went on to be monolithic fucking, uh, you know, on a generational uh, TV show. Very few... Uh, of the biggest, like, let's say the, uh, the U.S. version of The Office. If you've ever watched the first season of that, it's dog shit. It's literally fucking terrible. And then if you were somebody that liked The Office at any point in time after that, they had several of ama uh, amazing seasons, and it's one of the ro longest running, most popular comedy shows to have ever been done. There's lots of instances of exactly this. So my question to you, Mr. Black, is, do you think that Netflix doing this is is sustainable or do you think this is going to bite them in the ass and do you think that they're missing out on possibly great shows because they're just not giving them enough room to breathe uh before they before they cut them out um yes yes and yes so like i'm just yes in all three of those because like i didn't watch 1899 i heard good things about it um it's the same makers of dark um and apparently dark is one of the best shows ever made ever i haven't watched it because uh it was like subtitled in a, in a different language i guess multiple languages mm. um i'm still gonna get around to watching it because I, i've literally heard, it's like a sci-fi type i don't even know i didn't i didn't even dig into it because i just didn't want to be spoiled so there was a lot of hype around this and apparently like the season is good like it's really it's supposed to be really good uh, but they're canceling it and, um, where do I start? <laughs> the, uh, the model, like the model that they have Netflix is like just throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. But the thing is, is like what sticks to them is not what sticks to us. For the most part, like, yeah, they've got like Stranger Things. That's been a big, huge success. And it's like one of the few shows that they're they're on, like, what, season five going on season five or something like that now. Yeah. And I only watched the first season of Stranger Things. So, like, I, I, I checked out of that a long time ago. Kayla still watches it. She enjoys it. Um, But that's like something she'd watch while I'm down here doing this. Um, The thing is, is, is people got to understand is, is Netflix is not your standard cable television. It is not, oh, okay, we're going to play Big Bang Theory, and Big Bang Theory does really well, and people like it, so we're going to keep renewing this. For Netflix, it's all about subscriptions. That's it. There's nothing else. And they have certain metrics that if a specific show is not signing people up, they're, they're they're just not renewing it. Like, it doesn't matter how good the show is and how well it does. It's it needs to be a show that keeps people on the platform and then also gets people to sign up to watch said show. And obviously, 1899 is not doing is not performing the way that they would want to. And yeah, it's got a great critic score. It's got a great audience score. We're not denying that. But Netflix isn't in the business of just creating shows that people like. They're in the business of creating shows that hopefully people will like, but will also sign up to watch and stay on the platform to watch indefinitely. 
It's the reason why, you know, uh, Karate Kid c- continues, uh, or Cobra Kai, continues to get more and more and more seasons, even though I think that that show, like, I'm pretty much out now. It's getting a little long in the tooth. I'm out. So, <laughs> like, like, next season, I'm not watching. I'm not watching. Uh, not because I don't think the show, the, not because I think the show is bad. It's just, it's run its course. They're, like, they're stretching I, I, it a little thin. Like, yeah, it's just the same storylines. It's the same shit over and over and over again. Um, but obviously that show is signing people up. That show is keeping people on the platform and they have metrics and analytics that they know what is, what is what, you know, when people sign up, what's the first thing they're going to, you know, they do questionnaires, they find out what's hot, what's not. And just because people like 1899 doesn't mean that people are on Netflix for 1899. And unfortunately, they're just getting, they're just, they're just, because of that, we're seeing casualties of good shows. Um, do I think it's going to hurt them in the long run? I do. I think, I think it will hurt them in the long run simply because of this. I think that people are going to stop watching these Netflix original shows and not even give them a chance because they've been burned so many times. Like, they're scared. They're like, I'm going to get invested in this. Correct. And it's just going to get canceled on the other side of it. Correct. So even if the show is good and you, you want to stay on the platform for it, you won't even know because, like, you've been, it's, it's that thing. Like, you've got that X that, like, you know, if you go over their house, you're smashing. And you already know what it's going to be like. But you also know, like, that X, guy or girl or whatever, they're going to go batshit crazy on you. And they're going to like start calling you all the time and think that you're back in a relationship. And reality is, is you just want to stick your tip in something (laughs) and you want to stick your tip in something familiar, but (laughs) they're only interested if they want to be in a long-term relationship with you. And that's basically what Netflix is. They want a long-term relationship with you and your money. And there's so many different streaming services out there that they need to make sure that you are addicted to a specific product because when you think about it, every every streaming service that you are part of right now, there's probably a show or or likely a show or a series, mini series, whatever. Um, or maybe it's a, a like with with the HBO Max or whatever when they announced they're putting all their movies on HBO Max. Some people got it for that, but for the most part, if you're on Netflix, Amazon Prime. Prime's a little bit different, Prime Video, because a lot of people already have Amazon Prime. So, like, you're just kind of getting it because you got it anyway. It's a benefit. Right? It's a benefit. But we'll say HBO. We'll say Peacock. We'll say ESPN Plus. uh, Whatever. Most people, if they're really honest with themselves, they're there for a specific show or a specific series that got them there. And then it just so happens that they have so much shit on there that you you just continue to watch stuff until the next season of whatever, and then you're nothing else matters on the platform. Once that thing comes out, you're you're watching it. Like for me, HBO is Game of Thrones. That's it. I still have HBO. I don't watch HBO. I could cancel my membership and save twenty dollars a month, which I probably should do. But like, <laughs> I only really watch HBO for very specific movies like very specific movies or Game of Thrones. That's pretty much it. Uh, Netflix, I've always just sort of had Netflix, but I got into Netflix because of specific shows that they had at one point. So those shows, they're not a part of it anymore, but I've been in that, that infrastructure now for so long that they have me now, right? Like I've, I've, it's just become part of my everyday life, right? Disney Plus, it's for my son. It's for the it's for, it's it's for the the Disney movies, the classics, that sort of stuff, and they're trying to find things. And for Netflix, for a lot of people, it's Stranger Things. It just is. They gotta have they gotta have it at least for that. They're like, oh fuck, if it wasn't for Stranger Things, I'd fucking get rid of this fucking dog shit. Tons of people think that way. I don't think that way personally anymore, but the vast majority of people do, and. I just think Netflix is just in a different business um, than your traditional media, like your traditional uh, 
TV shows that that have ratings and whatnot. And they do put that in, like, they do have Netflix ratings. You see what people are watching the most and what they aren't. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it will, that it will have another, uh, another season or a spinoff, right? So I do think it's hurting them in the long run. I don't trust Netflix at all. It's the reason why I haven't watched 1988 yet uh, because of that. It's the reason why I haven't watched Sandman yet is because of that. Oh, um, Sandman and, was so good too. If they canceled that, I'd be so fucking along along with a slew of other shows. This is the reason why I haven't started it yet. But they are shows I'm intrigued and interested in. So when the time comes, I'll get on it. It's the same thing with like The Witcher, right? So The Witcher comes out. I was hard on that. Now that Henry Cavill's gone, and and they put out that new Witcher spinoff bullshit bombed. Oh, bad. <laughs> and now Henry Cavill's gone. Dude, I'm, 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 take, I'm giving you a hot take. They're going to have one season with, without with, Cavill. With, without Cavill. Yeah, and it's game it's over. It's gone. Show's oh, yeah. done. Oh, for sure. It's done. It's over. So, yeah. I mean, it is a problem, but I, I get it. They're running a business. And they're running a subscription business. So it's a little bit different. Yeah, it's true. So, like in traditional television, you, you get a little bit more air to breathe because you're selling because high, highly rated shows can get watched a bit more, and you're selling advertising space essentially. Ver, whereas yeah. this, the the model is even though they're talking about bringing in advertisements, uh, you know, supported tier, it's largely subscriptions. You have to convert subscriptions and keep them long term. It can't just be a one time, you know, kind of deal. And you don't necessarily want to get into a situation where. You're only getting people coming back for short stints, and then they finish their show, and then they cancel their sub, and Correct. then they're back. You want to keep them long term, so yeah, it's a, it's a it's you know they're walking this this tightrope between how much how much investment can we put into any given show, and how much runway can we give it before before we say that they've run out of runway and we have to can it and move on to the next thing to try and find something. But they have kind of like, in my opinion, they've stuck themselves in a really shitty corner where now. Um, where now, like you, and to build on what you said, like you're not, you haven't watched some of the best shows and more popular shows on the platform because you, you're afraid of getting burned. And that's, that's a sentiment that a shitload of people hold. And oh, that number sure. is only going up. up. And yes. so eventually, what that's going to do is going to create a, a situation where they're canning a show where people didn't watch it because they were ironically afraid that they were going to can it. And so yeah. they're reading it as it's not going to be popular. And so yeah. it goes away. And yeah. so I feel like this strategy only works until they reach some sort of critical mass with the number of people who aren't watching those shows because they're afraid that it's going to get uh, canned. And then they're going to be throwing a, like the baby out with the bathwater, which yeah. is why I think that if, you know, and I'm obviously, I, I'm, I'm a, a balding dude in my mother's basement right now. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. But if I was running the show, I would maybe say, okay, well, we do have to kind of, yes, throwing stuff at a wall until it sticks is a viable strategy. And yes, we have the investment money and time to kind of d use that right now to try and find as many shows that do create like a, a Stranger Things phenomenon where we can keep people for long periods of time. But maybe now it's better that we we simply scale back a little bit the, the volume of shows that we're producing and give the shows that we do produce two seasons to find out if they're going to be popular enough to, to, to can or not and then make that decision. Because I feel like because we know historically very, very few, that's lightning in a bottle situation, single season, first time, smash hit takes over the fucking world almost never happens and so and so uh, you know maybe it's scale back focus on higher quality for two seasons spend the same amount of money on less shit and then can after that because they will like i, I think they are going to start throwing the baby out with the bathwater where they'll have too many people that are like i can't watch this because if i get invested i've heard it's really fucking good but if yeah. i get invested i'm fucked and i've well, been they're burned gonna before have to start they're literally gonna have to start if they've got like a hit on their hands they're going to have to part part of their marketing is going to be like, it's so damn good that Netflix has already greenlit another season, you know, before it even comes out. Like they got to create that type of hype. Like, holy shit. Like, it's so good that you guys don't have to worry. It will not be canceled from season one. 
we're going up, we're already shooting season two. It's greenlit. So, but that's also a risk because they might have a good show, but they've only got so many dollars to spend per yes. year. Right. <laughs> so yeah. like, it's like, do I give these guys another $30 million to go and film a, a second season? Or do I take this 30 million and give it to Dwayne, the rock Johnson to be in another fucking generic ass film. But we have Dwayne, Dwayne, the rock Johnson representing Netflix and people are going to tune in like every mom and fucking in America is going to tune in to go watch Dwayne the Rock Johnson, you know, flex his pec muscles. Put on a ca- khaki colored t shirt. And- <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it's just one of those things. But we'll see. Netflix is just a weird, it's still burning money. It's, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I'll be honest, I don't fully get Netflix. Like, I get it, but I don't, I don't know what their end goal is here. And they're going to have to make some kind of changes at some point because th- this, this company will go bankrupt keep going you, the way that do you it's think, going do you think that despite the scale and the popularity and the ubiquity of netflix as a platform that that the people at the top are still looking at it in 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 the way of um that they're just doing this to get an exit do you think that that's their do you think that's where think they're so. do you think that they're going to so. try and stand on their own and not by not sell to somebody else or do you think that this is still kind of like a long play for burning venture capital until somebody comes in and, and says, yeah, you're worth being bought? It's possible. I mean, it's possible. But I, I, I don't know. I actually just don't have the answer. I like it's not like Netflix is going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. yeah. But like, holy shit, man. Like <laughs> <laughs> there the, it can go longer or it can be shorter, depending on how they how yeah. they navigate those like, waters. I think it'll be here for at least another decade, I, w- I would say. But the, 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 the thing is, is like in a decade, where will it be? It's either going to continue to be a juggernaut mm. um, in terms of like the streaming sphere. Like it, it became it, it became a, a saying like Netflix and chill. You know what I mean? Like it's it is part of our lives and have been for a long time. You know, they basically went they they're the new blockbuster of our generation, but we all yeah. know what happened to Blockbuster, <laughs> right? And things are things are different for Amazon, things are different for HBO, things are different for Disney Plus. They kind of, you know, they kind of move at their they own. They exist in different they, markets before correct. they entered, so they have fallback plans. Netflix correct. is just Netflix, Netflix and that's Netflix is Netflix. And that's that, right? And as more streaming services come out, more of the exclusive stuff is going to very specific studios and very specific streaming platforms. Before Netflix was everything, you'd have Disney on Netflix, you'd have fucking Fox on Netflix, you'd have <laughs> you'd have everything on Netflix because it was like the only thing. But now they all want their own fucking streaming service, and so now you got to rely heavily on Netflix originals, and they're paying shit tons of money for these original films. Or I mean, they paid a hundred million dollars for fucking for Knives Out, <laughs> Knives Out. Which right? thankfully to this point has actually been paying and off to paid, some degree. Yes, and they pay they made they paid a hundred million just for Daniel Craig and fucking Ryan <laughs> Johnson. That's the entry. That's the that's the that's entry. That's the entry. <laughs> they spend hundreds of millions of dollars on these knives out shits. And yeah, okay, it's good and people are enjoying it. I can get it. But like, holy fuck, these guys burning money burning it there ain't not a fucking chance in hell knives out has made them a return on their money there isn't a fucking chance in hell i'm sorry no no but like you said it's it's you know clearly it's a thing to get people on the platform correct they're getting people on the platform now people get to look forward to the next one they know it's coming they already know right so like i get what they're doing they're keeping people on the platform and they're putting out quality stuff like things like that but they're paying hundreds of millions of dollars to get it. Like, holy fuck. This isn't a Marvel movie. This isn't like an end of phase four film. This is an avatar. It's knives out. I just don't, I just don't know how they can continue to do this stuff in the long term, but who knows? We'll see. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Uh, speaking of who knows, and we'll see what happens. <coughs> Uh, wherever you stand on the topic, it appears that Ezra Miller will likely be returning to the Flash or to be, to well, be that's the Flash. Not true. That's oh, not did true. that get? Did that get? Well, did that get? Yeah. So I mean, the verbiage there is a uh, is is off. So maybe returning is that a better? Okay. N- not even that. 
Okay. So essentially, there there was something that came out um, from very reliable sources. It was in like the Variety, and they like they know what's up. Yeah. And uh, he will he will be in the Flash. It's coming out I yeah. think in June. So like yeah, that yeah. movie is coming out. But there was a couple of executives that said they would be open to the idea of him coming back. Oh, okay. The thing, it, the thing is, is those executives they're not they're not Zaslav or uh, Zaslav or so they're or not James making Gunn. the they're not making they're not the, making the, the, the fucking call. They're not making the call at all. And I would say that there is almost a zero percent chance that he'll be back unless the movie makes a billion dollars and the Flash making a billion dollars. Uh, I don't think so. Unlikely. If it made a billion dollars, then perhaps they have the conversation. Okay, yeah, he did this, 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 but it made a billion dollars. So if, you know he's getting uh, getting help right now, or I get I I should say they they're getting yes. help right now. Yes. Um, and uh, you know that I'm happy for them for 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 getting the help that they need, but at the same time. Uh, it's only been like six months. It's yeah, it, and it hasn't <laughs> even been. And it really hasn't even been that long. No, 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 no. It hasn't even been six months. So, um, you know, I wish them all the best. But like, uh, Ezra Miller is not returning to. I I, I think this is going to be the this the movie is going to come out. I think it's going to be apparently it's it's amazing. Like it's from from the the test screenings and the. The stuff that we're hearing from the studio and stuff, like they're really hyping this up. They said it like it's a, it's a, it's a, it, it's it's extremely good. But um, is it is it gonna make enough money to the point where they can actually let this guy or, you know what I'm saying, yeah. come back? You know, I'm trying to be respectful, but yeah, sorry, it's you know, uh, are they really gonna let them come back? You yeah, know? I, I don't, I can't it, see it. It's it's kind of it's kind of hard. I, like if if this was like if this was like and, and not even as the flash but in general I think I think there might be a cool down period on Ezra's on Ezra's career uh because there's going to have to be some time lapse you know to happen here uh and and for for them to actually prove that their the help they've been getting has been successful and they're uh and, and they're they're you know getting better and whatnot it, it's like it's it would be almost be like a Robert Downey situation where he had his dark period where, yeah. where shit was real bad. And then he, he, you know, he, he got himself, uh, but I mean, of I it. Think Robert Downey stuff was like, I could be wrong, but I think that was like more of like drugs. And yes, it was. Like it's not, it's not wild. the same. It's not the same thing. What yeah, all I'm I saying think, is like, in terms yeah, of like, it, yeah, I know what you're saying. It yeah, could be a yeah. redemption. Yeah. And, and I'm all for redemption. I don't think yeah, the, yeah. The, the, I don't think Ezra should be canceled. No, I don't think the career but, their career needs to end right now. Correct. No. But yeah. I think that Ezra needs some help, and then he needs to stay away from uh, this character and yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. get his own resurgence and kind of let like the world kind of give some distance for a bit, and then come back better than ever. With a nice redemption, everybody loves a good redemption arc, man. It's true. So I'm root. I'm rooting for Ezra Miller, but uh, it's clear that they need some help. Yeah. And yeah. like, there's a lot of mental issues and di different things going on, and they, they got no business um, fucking around with hundreds of millions of dollars of budget. Yeah. And you got to put it all on the line for Ezra, who you don't know is gonna go off the fucking handle and uh, you know break into somebody's house Hawaii or again. somebody or whatever allegedly yeah. that he's been doing. So. Uh, I wish them all the best, but it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we got a sneak peek, Mister Black, at the upcoming Gran Turismo movie this week. Uh, and I think I actually just popped up uh yesterday, maybe or even today. Uh, I don't know if you got a chance to to see that if it popped up on your timeline. Uh, you know, it, well, it's a teaser. It's not like it's a full blown trailer, but you know, they're talking to some of the actors. They're showing some behind the scenes stuff. That kind of an idea, you know, hyping the movie up from that perspective. And uh, and again, just to remind you, this this film has some pretty major names in it, uh, like Orlando Bloom and then the guy from Stranger Things, what's his name? David, um, I don't know. Something, don't the dad, the dad, you know, the, you, oh, who, uh, who played like in the Santa movie here and... Yeah, Violent Night. Yeah, Violent Night. Some, uh, somebody will say it in chat. Yeah. yeah, I just can't think of his name right now, but he, he's in it as well. Anyway, uh, David Harbour, that's his name. There you Thank go. you, Mark. I like him. Uh, uh, yeah, he's, he's great. Good. He's great. Yeah, he's 
Uh, so yeah, anyway, they, they had th this little teaser, uh, and you know, all, all I could say here is, is it's as promising as you could hope for, for a Gran Turismo movie. I don't know what kind of expectations to even have for a Gran Turismo movie. I don't know if this it is going to be have like... pretty fucking amazing cars. That's, it better have... Oh, I'm sure it will. cars. Uh, like, is this, are we going down like a Ford versus Ferrari type of a situation? Or are we going down like a different, you know, kind of a racing movie, uh, lane? Um, you know, we know that Gran Turismo takes itself very seriously, so I suspect it will be taking itself very seriously. Uh, but, uh, the major takeaway that I had from this is that Orlando Bloom has gotten old, and therefore I feel old. Saw that man? I mean, it's not like he, you know, he doesn't look ancient, but, you know, he's always looked like he's, he's been the same age forever. And now he's finally starting to look like he's not the same age. And I went, God I think damn. it's probably because you haven't seen him for a while, too. Well, that's right? true. You always like, see, yeah. like, you know, it's, there's a, you know, a long time in between. But he's always, he's always had a baby, like a very fair-skinned yeah. baby face kind of deal. He's got to be, like, deal. in his late 40s by now, right? Oh, yeah. Like, he's so got to be in his late he's 40s. He's finally starting to hit that age. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck, the Lord of the Rings happened so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> it happened such a long time ago. I bet there's one thing you didn't see yet. What's that? That just came out. The trailer for Nicolas Cage's Dracula just came out today. I, just before the podcast, I saw that it was listed somewhere, but I couldn't find I couldn't find the trailer to watch it yet. But I did see people reacting to it, uh, and uh, and I, everyone seemed to be thumbs it wasn't up. What I was, it wasn't what I was expecting. Yeah, uh, it's like campy. The tone and every, it's very campy. It's very campy. Um, it's very self aware. It feels like, uh, but it's Nicolas Cage. So you like, want it to be campy and you want self-aware. It to kind of be campy, and it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm a, like, uh, yeah. I mean, I enjoyed Nick Cage's uh, the unbearable weight of massive talent. I, I really enjoyed <laughs> that. I saw it twice, <laughs> and uh, you know, I'm gonna watch it. I'm no way in fuck. I'm going to theaters to see it, but like, no. I'll I'll watch it at home and I'll check it out. And I'm sure that it's gonna make me laugh. Uh, oh yeah, because it looks like it. It's got a good cast. Could good it's got a very good cast. It's got a funny cast, so I'm sure it will be fun. <laughs> he what I saw people I haven't seen it myself yet, but what I saw people talking about is that it they they were saying that it looks like Nicolas Cage is really having a lot of fun playing Dracula. Uh and uh and so, you know, if Nick Cage is enjoying himself, you know you're gonna get some you you're gonna get you're gonna get something good, uh for yeah. sure out of it. And uh yeah, I agree. I'll I'll be watching it. You know, I, I, once once you've seen the unbearable weight of massive talent, you can't go back. That's it. It's a it's a watershed moment for Nicolas Cage. -dom. you're all in. The man, if the man can, if the man can literally, uh, you know, make out with himself in his own movie, uh, and then go on a on a on a acid trip with Pedro Pascal, you can't go back from that. You've you've witnessed greatness, and now you're just all in. You have yep. to see where it goes from there. Uh... Yeah, so I didn't. I didn't see that. Anything? Uh, anything else uh, that popped up uh, that I missed out on there? Uh, Avatar. So Avatar. Yeah, where are we sitting at there for the dollars? Box office. It is currently. It is over one point five billion now. Hmm. So it is. So what? It is, what is? What is, did so, it, Well, we haven't hit the next weekend yet, so we have to wait until this correct. weekend to see what the uh, the turnover correct. is. So it, it actually went up by 2% week over week mm. from before. So it actually went up. Usually That's there's impressive. like a 30, 40, 50, 60% drop. Drop. Uh, no, nah, it went up. So, you know, it's still going. I, I, I'm pretty certain it's going to cross $2 billion. I'm pretty certain at this point. Uh, but yeah, we're at $1.5 billion. So is there, is already... there any specific market that seems to be driving it harder than... Oh, it's others, like, like the yeah. international market. It's already over a billion. Domestically, it's 450, 460 million. So like there's a huge difference. Um, and people are still like I just for the fun of it went on um, Cineplex and uh, to see what the IMAX tickets were still looking like. Mm. And when I looked, the the shows were still like 70, 80 percent pre sold out like. So the people are still going to the theater. Um, they're just, you know, it's like I said last time, it's just a, it's a four to five hour date or a, a family it's outing. An, it's an event. So it's, yeah. So it's not like a regular movie where you're like, hey, honey, you want to go see a movie tonight? I'm like, yeah, sure. We'll go see a movie. To have, we'll go after supper. It's like, nah, 
It's like we gotta. We're getting out of we bed at six a.m. Yeah, we gotta plan our fucking. <laughs> you know, even to get a babysitter for four or five hours, right? It, it just changes the scope of things. But people are getting out, but they're just getting out when they can. Hmm. Um, and uh, tons of people are rewatching this, so uh, I think it's gonna be, it's gonna hit the two billion mark. I think it's gonna hit the two billion mark within the next probably three weeks. Big money, Mr. James Huge. Cameron. And you know what, James? Old Jamesy boy came out and said, "Hey, you ain't seen nothing yet." He dropped a very James Cameron line. Said Avatar one and two, they're dog shit. This is just the entree, or the or the or the appetizer to the main course. This is just setting up the good shit. You guys ain't seen anything. Yeah, well, that's what they're saying. And, <laughs> and even the uh, even the I was watching interviews at. at the the stars there and they're like you know what i really love avatar 2 it's great it was an amazing experience all underwater but the third movie is when shit really starts picking up you know and uh it gets really really big and i guess like the third movie is about like a fire tribe so now like first oh. we're in the forest then oh we're now we're going to be assaulted with now sparks in 3d it's, poss it's possible <laughs> probably right? a lot of ash every time somebody swings a weapon we're gonna be like ah Ah! Yeah, and then uh, so so they're they're saying that it, it Avatar three it really picks up it adds more to the lore but then it, the action kind of picks up and they said James Cameron said they he sent the studio heads uh the script for number four and he said usually they have tons of notes and usually James Cameron ignores tons of those notes because like he's gonna it's gonna make whatever the fuck he wants to make and they're like. Okay, sure, James. You're James Cameron. You're James Cameron. You you <laughs> literally have like three of the biggest grossing movies of all time. Do whatever the like, fuck you want to do. Make us our billions. But apparently for the fourth film, he got the note back. And I think he said that the note said, oh shit, something like that. That was the note that they said, as in like, holy shit. Oh boy. That, that was it. They had no, they had no notes, nothing, just holy shit. That's what they sent back to him. Okay. And apparently the fourth movie, they go to Earth. So, and a, and we get to see what Earth is like and all this other stuff. So, Avatar is part of the Terminator universe. You heard it here first. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Can you imagine? <laughs> uh, so, anyway, I'm, uh, I, I'm, I'm. I'm on, I'm on the Avatar IV at this point, right? They, they got me hooked up. Just on I'm the just drip. like sitting there. I'm on the drip. Um, I'm not like screaming to the fucking you know, hilltops that like avatar is the greatest thing ever, but like from a movie going experience, it's pretty fucking awesome. It's pretty fucking cool. Well, so. well, uh, so what, so there's two more movies, right? After the, uh, that he has planned there's for this three, there's three and four and five. So three more. Okay. There's three more. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we've gotten like, we've gotten like the standard, then we've got like water, then we're getting fire. So we already got in the air in both movies, so that seems superfluous. So I wonder what the last two elements he's going to pull out of his ass. He's going to go for some ice. We're going to get an entire snow-based avatar. Possible. Uh, just anything that he can get particle effects assaulting your eyeballs in 3D. Uh, and uh, snow seems... Space avatar. It's the last one. We're going to yeah. space. And 3 is already filmed. It's done. Like, it's it's done. It's in post-production right now. Like so it's, it's an edit. It's on the editing floor with 15 hours floor. worth of, of footage for them to try and carve into a three and a half hour long and, extravaganza. Uh, four is partly filmed. So they're going to oh, okay. start. They're going to start. Re, they're going to pick up shooting again. Uh, do four and probably five back to back. And then. Uh, yeah. Well, there you go. Can't wait. J I just. J James. James is just. J <laughs> James has really turned into like uh, into like, uh, quite a, quite a fucking cartoon character here in the last couple of years. Where he's just come out and he's just saying, James just saying whatever the fuck James wants to say now. He's just uh, making he's like, shit up yeah, as he goes like along. Old, he's just like an old guy that doesn't give a fuck anymore. And <laughs> yeah. He's beyond successful. So like it's like whatever. He, I, yeah. you know, I just James just go make your movies. All right, keep your <laughs> keep your political talk and your fucking your personal viewpoints of stuff just keep that to yourself or say them i don't really care just keep making good movies and uh you know elevate the uh, movie going experience all right you yeah. do whatever it is that you need to do yeah well there you go all right and with that it's time to move on to tech support patreon.com slash lag tv is a place to go if you want to financially support this podcast and keep the uh the old train moving down the tracks each and every week 
Uh, for uh, those who are in the $10 or more tier, you get a couple of perks. Chiefly, you get to ask us questions in a post that I put up over the podcast called Tech Support. You write your questions in the comments. We give you some answers in the time that we have. Oh, here's the throwback, Mr. Black. Uh, he said, uh, Seth asks, do we have a final diaper count? Oh, it was less than 10 for sure. Less than 10? Yeah, yeah. He's, yeah we, we Ke- didn't cross the, the 10 barrier? Hell no. <laughs> Kai's been out of diapers now for like almost a year. He's been, he's been out of diapers for a while. Yeah, you He's would now be. using like the regular toilet. Uh, oh, he's learned shit. how to wipe his own ass, you know, now. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going through. I, I would say it's been, it's been at least nine months since he's been out of diapers, I would imagine. It's been about nine months. There you go. Yeah, and I, I, I've changed no more than 10. And if I'm really being honest... It's less than that? It's less than that. It's probably, <laughs> it's probably five. You've done well. Yeah. You've done well. Kayla's, Kayla's done well. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> I've done next to nothing when it comes to diaper, when it comes to diaper changes. Uh, I'm, hold, I'm holding down the fort in all other ways. It's just not my jam. Uh... Any, uh, Danish asks, any public restroom awkward stories or close calls? He said, I feel like every time we're done with my toddler's swim class, the little guy thinks it's funny to try and open the stall while I'm changing. Uh, I mean, not really. I mean, I've taken some pretty fucking wild shits, uh, in, in a bathroom before, but like, I'm at that age now, like before I used to be petrified to like go and shit in a public bathroom. Like Mm. I just would not do it. And if I did, I'd like put toilet paper around the seat, which I would still do now to a degree. Like I, it's gotta be a fucking clean ass toilet. I'm not fucking sitting in some stranger's piss. You can tell immediately whether or not you're going to be sitting in somebody else's shit and piss before you do it. Yeah. Correct. One way or another, even if it looks spot clean, I'm still taking toilet paper and I'm like fucking wiping it down. A hundred percent. Pressing on it. No matter what. Right. This shit could look like fucking, I could lick it. And I'm still, I'm still doing that shit. Um, and I used to be petrified. Like I remember being in school. I would never shit at school. I would, I would, I would go home. Like I would say I was sick. If like, I would just leave and just go home shit. Um, Cause there's just no way. But the older you get, the less fucks you give. It's true. And now I'll shit anywhere. If I got to shit, especially with the way my stomach is now, bro, I could be out somewhere and just eat something. And then two hours later, my stomach's like, <laughs> That wasn't it. So I'm going to take a shit. And I've taken some pretty crazy shits. <laughs> and I'm also that guy now when I shit in public. I'm that I'm that dude. You're not that holding like back. Straight, no, bro. I'm, Wide I'm open. Like, ah! <laughs> Sometimes I'll even like, I'll even just go, oh, you know what I mean? Like, oh, fuck. I don't, ca- I don't have you gotten any anymore. responses before like are you okay in there like everything uh you know you're gonna nah, you're gonna make it I, I can't say i have i mean there was one guy where it almost felt like a competition where he was in the bathroom i was in vegas and he was in the bathroom and i was i was just releasing a demon and <laughs> i'm like uh like an alcohol like, shit kind of a situation i'll just my stomach in general and and alcohol just like all of it man it's just coming out it just like i was pissing out my ass <laughs> and and it was like you know it was splashing the fucking shit like shit water was hitting my fucking ass and my balls <laughs> and, and i'm like ah oh, right and i'm just oh, and all you hear is ding, 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 ding. you know what it's like when it's like it's like a sputtering faucet coming yeah, it's like hail coming down and hitting fucking a car or something. It's just making splash noises and dinging noises. And then the guy there to a stall, a couple down from me, he was like, ah! And he was just, he was like, what? And like, you could just hear the shit just, what? and then I would go, ah! and I was like, man, and he's like, ah! It was like, we were almost having a competition. <laughs> so that was funny. You know, and it was even funnier when we got out of the stall and we're sitting there washing our hands. And we just kind of looked at each other and smiled and left. We didn't even say anything. It was so fucking funny, bro. Holy uh, shit. shit. You, yeah, let, was... you let everything on the battlefield, man. Nothing more needed to be said. <laughs> we didn't Nothing need to say more. anything, bro. We didn't need to say anything. We just knew. We just knew. Uh, so anyway, uh, well, I've certainly not had any shit battles with anyone in uh, in stalls before. That's for sure. Uh, I, look, I, 
All of the all of the weird and crazy shit, like as anyone knows, happens at a public pool. Like that's where all the craziest motherfuckers go. Um, and and the older they are, the crazier they are. So you know, when when I was in the summer camps, and every once a week was pool day, and so we'd go and have like you know there'd be sixty fucking kids in the pool, and then we you know we take them out and get back in the changing room. But there'd also be the general public there. Or whatnot, or when we first get there before our time slot would be like, you know, uh, an open swim would be happening or, or like, you know, a uh, uh, water aerobic class or some shit for, for older people. And so you get in there and there'd be like 70, 80 year old men like fucking straight up just hair drying their ball sack in the fucking room, like foot up on a, on a, on a bench with like the, the, you know, like you could change like the direction of the fucking like, uh, air forced air dryers mm. and they'd like, they'd like point it down to their fucking dick and balls and press the button. And you just see like 70 year old <laughs> man just full blast in their sack. they just be I've like flapping. That. I've just, actually seen that happen. <laughs> I've actually seen it happen. <laughs> and so you and you got like you got like 30 fucking kids you're walking like eight eight years old, six years old, nine years old. And of course they're like it's just fucking awkward, man. Nobody nobody needs to be showing a bunch of kids your fucking Dude, old the wrinkly sex. The old guys that got like huge fucking muff and it's all like Oh, it's it, just it's straight. all gray. Yeah. And it's 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 long gray it, fucking just coarse coarse as fuck <laughs> and then they got their little tip sitting in the center and they don't give a fuck they don't they'll, care they'll walk around they'll have a conversation with you <laughs> they'll be like and the, the, they'll, they'll have the towel wide open you're sitting in the gym they'll have the towel wide open like yeah man it's just like fucking nasty out there today isn't it bud i'm like yeah man it really is but like, yeah man back when i was in vietnam man it was even crazier i was like dude what the fuck man why we can have this conversation and I don't have to see your balls at the same time. Like that, Seriously. that is, I don't know. I, I, I don't think even in my old age, I'll ever get to a point where I'm walking around a public bathroom, balls and dick swinging, just like fucking just, just having casual conversation with strangers. I just don't think that's going to fucking happen. That's just fucking weird. Uh, but, uh, but that, yeah, that's, and so like most of my weird, you know, run-ins are from that and, you know, it's always, it's just fucking awkward. And they, and then when you get a bunch of, like, uh, the other thing that you don't think of when you're doing summer camps and you get that and all the kids are changing and it's all, you know, for me, obviously I'm in the guys, uh, the guys bathroom. Uh, and so you get a bunch of kids like, and you like but boys, if you're a boy, you grow up you, and you've done public pool shit before you would probably know. Everyone's like, like the bunch of kids comparing their dicks together and they're all like fucking standing around getting changed. And they're, you're like, just fucking get changed. And the kids get are like, changed, <laughs> <laughs> and like they're like comparing their fucking like their fucking little micro dicks together and they're like Ahh! and so you know and then you get to find out what what names their parents have given to the kids to use this terminology like because they don't nobody's nobody's parents are like they're not called hey, a penis that's your willy. it's like a willy or wee wee or the, like yeah <laughs> yeah look <laughs> Yeah, there's, they got all kinds of names. It's like, just change your shit and get yeah. out of here. I don't want to look at this old man's sack any longer. Let's just get into the pool and stop your shit. So yeah, like, that's, that's just kind of... But that's public pools, man. It's just... It's always a public pool. It is the scariest place on earth. Don't go there. For a number of reasons. It's the only place I've ever... Dude, I walk around in sandals, too. Like, anyone walking around barefoot in the bathrooms yeah. of the public pool? Bad life choice. You're just waiting to get something gonna have athletes foot in fucking two hours warts and shit like just warts, you name it it'll be a bad time it's bad fucking time just don't do it don't do it uh let's see here roran asks is there a movie or tv series that is widely loved by the masses that you can't stand for me it's avatar legend of korra didn't care for the pacing and several digs at ong's character so, any movie or TV series that was super popular, but you just couldn't stand. For me, for I eventually watched the whole thing. For me, uh, it was uh, it was uh, Breaking Bad. Ooh, wow! I watched. I couldn't stand I, it. I, I when I was uh, I like I, the show had completely been released by the time I got around to starting to watch it. And, and it's, it was you know, heralded as one of the greatest shows of all fucking time or whatever. And I love Brian Cranston. I fucking think he's incredible. And I was like, all right, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll sit down. I never had the ability to watch it on television because I didn't have the channels at the time. And so I eventually was like, I had the opportunity. So I was like, okay, I'll watch, I'll watch the show. 
I started watching it, and I just couldn't do it because it was just like it was uh, like it was the most depressing show I'd ever watched in my life. Like the first like couple of seasons of that show, uh, it was awful. Uh, I felt like ass at the end of every every at the end of every episode, and I was like, why am I? I can't drag myself through this shit. And then I, I had to step away from it for like a year and a half. And I eventually came back and I was like, all right, let's just fucking stomach it, get through it, you know, fucking whatever and watch it. And so, uh, uh, I got through it and, uh, like suffered through the beginning. And then the part that, that, uh, that then caught me that made me want to fucking throw the, the, the show away again was, what was her name? Skylar? Yeah, the I wife. I couldn't stand her. Yeah, I couldn't oh, stand my- her. God, I'm I yeah. just like I and it's not the actress's fault, like, but like just holy shit. I wanted to fucking reach through the screen and strangle her every time she was on the fucking TV. And yeah. so uh it made it very difficult. So like the, uh, I mean I watched it all, I got to the end. Um I think it's a, a good show, but man, I it was at the time it was it was all anyone would ever talk about, greatest show fucking ever made. I watched it and I was like, how do these people fucking drag themselves through this shit? I just couldn't. Yeah. And that was that was that was it for me. So that's probably the best example because it was so popular at the time. Um, I would say for me, because we're just talking about shows that like or series that everybody loves. Yeah. Mine's The Walking Dead. Mm. Easily. Easily. That's another that's another that's I another mean, good one. holy fuck, that show went downhill so fucking fast and it became so bad and monotonous <sighs> and dumb. And it only just ended. Oh, that is like absolutely just. insane to think about. <laughs> and apparently the main guy is like working on like a spin-off, like another version. Well, they're of doing it. one with uh, Norman Reedus's character and another character oh, uh, to continue continue on their two characters in the show. It's like, oh my goodness. Like, if I was those actors and actresses, I've already made my millions. Like, the shit has got syndication now. They're going to be making money for the rest of their lives off the show. Walk away. Fuck. I mean, maybe they just, maybe they just can't get anything bigger and this is just their, their lane. You know? Yeah, they're just Very comfortable. Possible. They're making their money. Maybe they like, like but, the people they work with, and it's kind of whatever. Uh, they the they also had running in parallel. They had so they had wa- the Walking Dead, and then they had Fear the Walking Dead, which was like a show that they ran in parallel. That was a totally different cast of characters, same universe, yeah. like and it, uh, it, everything. Like AMC was just the Walking Dead network for like 10 fucking years, years. yeah Damn and it decade. just never it just never ended and i got in i ended up watching the walking dead uh, i i i backtracked a bit to catch some of the earlier seasons um and then i and then i was watching it in as it was releasing for a time right around the time where the negan character that's when um, i that's when i, I left. got in it's like and, around season four i think i got to something like that maybe five yeah i don't remember and and you know, know I can't think of his name right now the the actor's name right now but he did I, it's not he he did a great job of Negan he was he clearly did the job of being an asshole that was very easy to hate I like that clearly he did that but um whoever told him that every scene uh when he was doing like a monologue which was once they introduced Negan, half the show was a, a Negan mon- monologue. Like, that's all it was. It was everyone else was standing around. It was the easiest payday for everyone else in the cast because they just stood around. Uh, and uh, all, uh, Jeffrey Dean Morgan. And, and so uh, Je- Jeffrey Dean Morgan would show up to, to the set and everyone was like, oh, it's day off for the rest of us because yep. he'd walk on and it would just be him standing there going, oh my God, I'm Jeffrey Dean. Morgan and he'd do this lean back thing and every time he ended a sentence it was like this and holy shit and let me bring out the bad again and then like that was like the entire show for like four more seasons and I was like oh my god can this please end and I was like maybe he'll finally get his due and there will be some closure nope Jeffrey Dean Morgan was too popular they kept that motherfucker alive and I was like I can't I can't do it I'm done yep I'm out and so yeah that's another that's another good choice Mm. That's another good choice for sure. Uh, mm, 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 mm. I don't even know if I have five, but we'll try and get a couple out. Time Tricks asks, "What are your top five board games?" I don't know if I can go. I don't know if I can name five. Uh, Monopoly number yeah. one. Yeah. 
Uh, number two would be Cards Against uh, Humanity. Mm-hmm. That's a fun one to play. That is fun. Um, then I would say number three, Scrabble. Mm-hmm. Number four, um, I'm going to go Operation. Ooh, it's Operation. Classic. Some of you guys aren't old enough. Maybe I can, you know what that, that commercial is, in my head. Is there water on the knee? Operation. Operation. It's a whole bucket. See? Operation. Operation. <laughs> um, and then number five. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Yahtzee. Mm. Yahtzee. Mm. That's a good one. It's kind of like a dice game. Situation. It is, but 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 still, you know, yeah, I consider it kind that. of like a I consider it a board game. Mm. I would say, uh, for me, uh, yeah, I got a, a Monopoly is Monopoly. It's even goaded, if it, even if it's broken and everyone hates it when they play it. Let's be real, Monopoly is the board game. So uh, Monopoly, uh, Scrabble, uh, Monopoly, Scrabble, uh. I think, uh, oh, Mastermind is pretty fun. You ever played Mastermind? I did. Yep. That's pretty fun. Uh, Trivial Pursuit, I Ooh. think, has to be up there. Ooh, I didn't even think about that one. For sure. I mean, it's kind of similar. No, it's actually not similar to that. Yeah, that's a good one. Go with Ooh. go with that. And then, uh, oh, man. I won't, I won't lie when, when you know, it, it's, it'd be a tie between these two. But like just for the shit that you can, it's so simple and brain dead. But you can like do it, powers out, and you're just it's whatever. Uh, so uh, trouble, the game trouble. Yeah, but you have to one. get the one where the bubble pop fucking yes. dice thing is in the middle. Otherwise, it's not trouble. Uh, so that one, and then the other one that I'd say is a dark horse there, Battleship. Ooh, yo, I gotta take, I gotta take Yahtzee off and put up Battleship. <laughs> That's but it's going to be one. talking battleship so that you yeah. can hear like E, 5. You got to hear, Dude, you gotta hear the good, sound effects. Dude, I'm going to go. I think I have a battleship here, but it's not It's not a good one. I'm going to go get battleship and, and play with, play it, uh, show my son. Battleship is a fire game to play. It's, it's fun. It's a good game. It's fun. It's game. Uh, one that I haven't played, but I know is like, would be on anyone else that plays any amount of board games list as like an entry point. Is Settlers of Catan like that game is just like ubiquitous, yeah, fucking crazy. Uh, but I'm not. I'm I'm that I'm that basic bitch. I'm the Hasbro guy that just kind of like whatever you know the, the five basic friggin' uh, board game kind of situations. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say those are those are probably uh, my but battleships. I do. I remember when dad dad for Christmas when I was younger got the Talking Battleship just came out Classic. and he bought Talking Battleship. We played the shit out of Talking Battleship. And it was dope. It was dope. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, this will be. I, 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 this will be fun for Jeff to. I, I want to hear what Jeff's answer to this is. So Kaluzzi asks, uh, or says first, and then has a question. Said, uh, "Been trying to properly set up my new my new PC with Windows and various software for three days now." Windows has been making me want to chop my dick off. Well, that's that's part of the Windows experience. You know, welcome to PC building. Uh, because it doesn't want to let me make some simple changes. My Oh, that's even more Windows 10 and 11. Microsoft wants to make sure that you don't have any agency over your computer. Uh, my question is, what has been one of your guys' worst experiences with hardware and software setup over the years? Can you think of... You've had several oh, uh, meltdown moments uh, for for uh, PCs and shit. I mean, I I do rage every single time there's a Windows update because it keeps changing <laughs> all my audio settings. It's true. And, like my audio settings aren't even that like it's not super complicated, but it's not very basic either. It's like, enough I'm to using, be annoying uh, whenever you have correct. to go back. Yeah. Yeah, like I'm fucking using you know virtual cables and fucking you know, hardware and then software and, uh, you know, it, and then you got to plug it through OBS and have Windows not fuck you. So, like, it's, it can be a pain in the ass. But I think there was one time where I had a computer that I just kept getting blue screens of death over and over and over again. This ended up being your RAM, I think. It was a RAM, yeah. yeah. And we had multiple sticks of RAM, so we had to start taking out one stick at a time. 
and fucking running it. And then when I thought like I had it finally figured out which one it was and I'm rendering a video for fucking eight hours, all of a sudden the fucking blue screen comes up. Nope, not that, not that RAM. And then we do it again. We do it again. You know, it's that uh, one and was the bad. thing was, and the RAM was brand new. That was the worst part. It was like it was just a dead stick. And it was it was double. You got it. You had a dead stick in your computer, and then you and then you lost the lottery, and somehow we got another set of RAM that had and it a dead died stick again yeah. in it. Yeah, it was rough. That was a fucking rough go. And you know, it's one thing to have shit RAM, and then you if you know it's shit RAM, you just go order another one, and like you can get shit fixed in a few days. Or you can go to the store and hopefully you can find it. And you can literally have it fixed in an hour. Yeah, we didn't really have that option back then. We didn't have that option back then. Yeah. And we also didn't know what it was right away. <laughs> so, like, we had to do a shit tons of testing. We had to run some software and shit that would take, like, uh, information and try and... Uh, it's mem we did mem test overnight mem a few times. Mem testing and fucking... Yeah. Like, it, just, it was just a fucking pain in the ass. It was a two-month process to figure that out because we were... I was so convinced that it wasn't the RAM after we swapped it out originally because the, the percent chance of that having happened was so fucking small. Was like, it, yeah. it has to be Can't something be. else. Yeah. Uh, and we ran... And I had run when we first installed that, mem that memory. I had run mem test that first night and it was... It cleared. It was eight hours worth of mem test. And it yeah. was fine. So I was like, oh, great. Fucking problem solved. And then it turns out that it just like baked itself like 48 hours later and we were at square one again. And so we had to buy more fucking RAM. And then eventually, well, we returned that RAM and, and then yeah. and then got it finally it working. Brutal. But it was like a, a two month process. Yep. Lag TV was hurting during that time. It took a lot of it took a lot of rendering time when shit blows up like that. Yeah. Now I can render a video in fucking, you like know, four minutes. <laughs> Exactly. Back then it was like four hours minimal. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we were also working like back then it changed a bit too because when I mean we recorded with fraps, and so that's, that's raw video. That's yeah. that's raw dog in it. So like a file was like a hundred and fifty gigs. gigs or some shit for like a twenty minute video, and so yeah. like you put you dump that into into <laughs> we were using fraps. Vegas. Is that is that still a thing? Is fraps oh yeah still oh, a yeah. Thing? oh yeah because it's it's. It, there's nothing wrong with it if you want raw video capture. I mean, like that's yeah. fine. It, but it's I still just, do that. I use OBS now, like so. I just like I just capture via OBS. Yeah, but it's not it's not raw it's not raw video it. anymore. So like because you don't need it. That's true. Uh, yeah. So we used we used Fraps and then we dumped it into into a, a a version some old ass version of Sony Vegas, and. Yeah. Uh, Vegas was already a broken fucking program to begin with, and you add on the computer issues, and then you dump a hundred plus gig fucking fraps file into it, and it was like the computer just wanted to be sent into the sun. Uh, yeah, it was a. It took a very long time to crank out uh, videos back then, uh, and then we learned how to do batch rendering. Uh, yep. But then you'd get through batch rendering, and then like two or three of the videos would have random black like black oh, segments. Oh, I remember that. Oh my fuck! The video would just yeah. cut out at random. Just randomly. Uh, the audio would still be going, but it would just black screen. And so yeah. you'd have to re-render shit like fucking three or four times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it, yeah, it was, that was, that was absolute fucking madness. But, humble uh, beginnings, man. Humble, humble, humble beginnings humble is beginnings. right. Uh, for me, with PC stuff, I mean, the, the running joke is if I build somebody's PC, everything goes fine. If I build my own, everything doesn't. So, like, I've seen, and the reason why I know anything about computers as it stands now is because I have witnessed such bullshit in every form of hardware and software that I've had to spend countless hours figuring all of it out. That's the only reason I know any of the shit that I do, because it's just kind of the, the nature of the beast, especially when you're a content creator. You don't have time to sit around waiting for somebody else to try and debug your, your problems. You gotta just go fucking figure it out yourself. Um, so, yeah, I mean, any, any and everything. I think the... Don't get Adam going for two hours though, guys, because he, no. he he can go. This this would be a whole fucking. This could podcast be a whole podcast. I'll give the one. I'll give the one that was the worst, and that was the one where it was my internet service provider. I was getting packet loss, um, but it's packet. It was packet loss at such a level that you'd only notice it if you were a power user like Jeff or I or a streamer, where you you have to have a constant like a stable connection to the servers, otherwise you drop. You start dropping frames, and so any amount of packet loss results in drop frames. And this is on a fiber optic connection direct to home. No coax anywhere, just straight fiber. So um, it resulted in like a month and a half or two months of talking with uh, tier one, which is a nightmare, 
followed by tier two, not any better. And then eventually they passed me on to what is like a, some sort of mythical unicorn of tier three. When I had just about had enough of answering the same questions over and over again, I went through six, five or six routers in that period of time before they finally listened to me and said, Hey, I don't think it's the fucking router boys. I think it's the node or I think it's something on like, I think it's something on, on like the back end, back end, like three dudes sitting in a pitch black room with three like fucking computers in front of them. And all they do is, is keep the network up for the ISP and sure shit. That's what it was. It just took them two and a half months to finally listen to me. They're like, nope, it's just the router. Have you tried turning it off and on again? And I, 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 I almost fucking lost my mind during that period. But that's probably the worst because it was the lengthiest period of time. The rest of it was fucking just the, your typical PC bullshit. Uh, let's get one more in here because I've got to take M to work early tonight. She is charge nurse on the floor. Um. Oh, this is a kind of a good one. Uh, I'll try and get two in here real quick. Um, so we won't be too verbose with this first one. Neil asks, what single player game do you wish was multiplayer? And what multiplayer game do you wish was single player? I've got a very quick answer to this. I have right. never played a single player game where I've wanted it to be multiplayer. Never once. Uh... But I can say I have played many multiplayer games that I have wished were single player. Uh, Bioshock 2 mm. is the number one answer mm. for why in the fuck did they give this multiplayer? Stop. So that would be my answer for that. But I've never played in my memory a single player game where I said, fuck me, this should have multiplayer. I don't think it's ever happened. Ooh, that's a good one, man the because that that just did not need to be a multiplayer game <laughs> but it was during the period where everything was being everything forced was multiplayer i know yeah. if you didn't yeah. have multiplayer you you, you're, you, you, know, you they did you, just, they just didn't give you the yeah. money to make your game like if you took the yeah. pitch to them even ken levine going to them and they're like hey i made bioshock and they were like guess what we don't care still needs multiplayer <laughs> have fun that was bad um a single player that i wish was multiplayer Ooh, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. I'm going to go I'm going to go Mario 64. Hmm. Running around with a friend? I think that'd be fun. And I, it would be ultra groundbreaking. Like I I'm pretty sure Donkey Kong 64 you you could use two players because you you would have like a companion. I could be wrong. Not at the same time. It would be it, uh, you wouldn't time. be you you wouldn't be able to split screen at the very least because the N sixty four would explode. I don't remember Donkey Kong having it. Jeff's over at his video game wall right now, looking at the box. Um, it says one to four players simultaneously, but that could have been like some of the. I think there was like a battle mode or some there shit. There is in a it. battle mode for sure. Yeah, but I think I think Mario sixty four would have been really cool. Um, like well, they could have really done it. They could have done it like, for example, um, like they did with Super Mario World, where it was one player plays until you know they're done the level or dies, and then the second player comes in. And That's they do true. it, but because of the open world structure, it might yeah. have been a little bit more complicated. Uh, but nevertheless, yeah, I could, yeah, I'd be, I would have been down for it. I mean, just to roll around with your buddy and like, uh, I don't know, it seems cool. I, it's yeah. hard for me to think of single player games that I wish was multiplayer because whenever you have a good, because when we say wish was multiplayer, you usually have a good experience with the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you have a good solo player experience, I actually think that's a rare thing. And yeah, it should it should probably stay that way. Like it's meant to be a single player game. Um, So it's a bit tougher for me in terms of multiplayer that I wish was single player or that should have been single player. I mean, I can't I mean, you pick such a good one. I can't really think of one in particular, but I would say like 70 percent of the games in that era needed to be single player and not multiplayer 
yeah, yeah, because yeah. of the simple fact they were just throwing in multi and the multiplayer in those games were typically like dumb multiplayer side uh, modes. It wasn't even like part of the main game it was like there's a multiplayer battle thing. And, and it was like the dumbest. It's like, what are we playing? Well, here? you could tell at that point they were just shoehorning shoe multiplayer in. Shoehorn it in. There was like no real substance. It was almost like we were playing like a dev um concept thing like an alpha where they would go in and test things but like they allowed us to go in there and they kept score so you know i think you just picked the best one that one was so egregiously bad yeah like it was just like what are we doing here yeah um and i can't really think of anything i can't really think of anything else like off the top of my head it's a good question though yeah yeah i mean if anything else comes to mind i'll, I'll try and remember it for next week but i um, the general rule of thumb is almost any game that was built primarily for a single player experience usually does not get improved by adding multiplayer. Um, but there are some multiplayer games that maybe I could say would go in the reverse more readily yeah. than, than the opposite. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's, that's definitely the rule of thumb for me. Cause as soon as you talk, like Bioshock 2 is definitely the easiest one for me. Cause Bioshock is so very specifically a single player experience yeah. that that was a weird thing for them to have um all right thors put that question in a pocket add it to the uh, post next week i'm gonna be honest speaking of uh jeff having shit battles i'm about to go have one myself if i answer another question here i might just be fucking cleaning up the floor here so i'm gonna head out of here we're gonna end the technical po alpha podcast for this week thank you very much for stopping by uh we'll see you all next week for another one and until then stay safe out there and peace. Peace.